Well, good morning. This week we have a number of birthdays to celebrate. To start, we have Ruth Rothenbuehler on the 15th, Judy Hansen on the 17th, and Owen Brinker on the 17th. We also have Stephanie Lang on the 18th. So to all of you, uh, happy birthday, and may God bless you on that special day and throughout the year to come. I'd ask you to check your prayer list. We've had some new names added to that. We also pray for the victims of natural disasters, uh, those affected by chronic health conditions and are, who are battling the uh, COVID disease. Finally, we pray for our military service personnel and all their loved ones, especially this week for the troops that were deployed now to Poland. We ask God to be with them and we give them their th our thanks for their service to the country and to us. We've got a number of other announcements in the bulletin. Um, the women of the church have a meeting on the 20th after church, uh, dart ball activities. Uh, a special thank you to everyone that donated to the Hurricane Relief Fund in Kentucky says that a check for $4,500 was sent to support the victims in Kentucky. Also, there's some um, cards in the narthex. Please consider sending a card to anyone that could use some uplifting. Uh, take a look at those on your way out, please. Are there any other announcements? If not, let's begin our worship. Will you rise, please? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. All the sins I have done. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those you called us to welcome. Accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have left undone. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son, born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, our sins are forgiven. We are the descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. We continue with the opening hymn.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Ghost be with you all. Let us pray together. Living God, in Christ you make all things new. Transform the poverty of our nature by the riches of your grace, and in the renewal of our lives make known your glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with the lesson. Good morning. First reading for today is taken from Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals, and make mere flesh their strength. Whose hearts turn away from the Lord, they shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness in an uninhabited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The heart is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? The Lord tests the mind and searches the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruits of their doings. Please join in reading responsively Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. They are like trees planted by streams of water bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. Word of God, word of life. Will you rise, please, for the gospel? Now hear the holy gospel according to St. Luke, the sixth chapter, beginning at the 17th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came down with the twelve and stood on a level place with a great cloud of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all of Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed by their diseases, and those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to teach, touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. 
But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Today's lesson would seem to be about blessings. In general, we consider those blessings to be gifts from God. But there's more to it than that. Because it's a contrast between what Jesus talks about poor people in need and rich people. And it's interesting to sometimes examine what exactly he's thinking and how that applies to us. First of all, what are the gifts from God, these blessings? And what comes to mind immediately are things like peace and joy, contentment. Those are the things only God can give. It's hard to go into Hope Depot and get a gallon of peace or a quart of joy unless you're in the detergent department. But there's more to it than that. And you might say, wait, I don't have all that much joy or peace in my life right now. How do I get this blessing? Well, I'm no expert on God's delivery system, but this I have noticed. People who tend to live by his commandments and follow Jesus' teachings seem to find a lot more peace and joy in their lives than others. And you might say, well, so then is that some kind of reward for being good? And I don't think so. Because I think God showers those blessings on all of us, on everyone. And perhaps it's just the people who live according to his commandments that recognize these, these gifts and seem to know how to use them. Maybe that's what the commandments are for to teach us how to use God's blessings wisely. Of course, there's more gifts from God than just the things that touch our feelings. We know that all good things come from God. And so things like family and home, our job and our food are all gifts from God. I don't know about you, but God doesn't deliver the milk to my front door on a Saturday morning. So how does he get the job done? Well, obviously through the hands of others. And that's almost always where the problem comes in. <laughs> Jeremiah says it best. He says that the heart of man is both devious and perverse. God gives you something good. And he says, share it with those that need. And somehow between getting the gift and sharing it with others, some things happen. <laughs> and you might go, no, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I don't, I don't see how we could anyway mix up these things. If God wants me to do something, I usually do it, right? Yeah, maybe. But I think also we're very good at deceiving ourselves in those ways. L let me offer you an example. There's a guy that gets up every morning, sits down to breakfast, his toast is burned. Not just one day, but just about every day. So he starts to fiddle with the toaster and there's a loud spark and a pop and the handle that controls the thing comes off and he goes, oh boy. So the next time he's in the store, as he's walking out of the hardware department, he looks and right there on the end bay is a sign that says, Super Deluxe Digital Executive Four Holer Toaster on sale half price. And he has a brilliant idea. It's almost Christmas. Buys the toasters, throws it in his bag, sticks a bow on it and puts it under the tree. Now, I probably should also tell you in this story that his wife has been leaving some subtle hints. Like right next to his cornflakes in the morning is a catalog. And there's this beautiful coat circled in red. 
and the size is underlined and so is the color. And when he goes and picks up the paper, there's a store that's having a sale and right there underneath the thing, she points out that that coat's on sale with another big red circle. He even finds a little map that shows where in the store the coat is. But he's already got a gift, so no big deal. So I'd like you to imagine Christmas morning when his wife sees this bag, tears it open, and goes to put on her new toaster. Oh boy. I don't think I'll visit them that Christmas day. I think it's going to be very chilly in the house. Yeah. You might ask, what's the purpose of this story? Well, if a man can live with a woman year after year after year and still misinterpret what kind of gifts she needs and would like to have, how much easier is it for us to live with God all our lives and ignore or miss his simple and subtle suggestions about caring for each other? Unfortunately, it seems to be very easy. Yes, I know what God wants me to do, but I think what we really ought to do is, and off we go. Usually what happens is, we look at a situation, decide what's good for us, and never take the next step that says, but what's good for them? Or how will this affect them? Or what should I do about them? the other part of the equation. It, it's become such an epidemic in this country that really I think if you could put a catchy tune to it, our new national anthem ought to be, I got mine. You have to add a few more lines, but that should be easy. We see then, as God gives us these gifts to share, and the way we sometimes avoid that 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 ties directly into our gospel lesson, which then is used to define what do we mean by rich and poor? Imagine, just for the fun of it, that you're sitting in a cafe right next to the window and they've just delivered a six course dinner. I mean, there's salad and soup and two kinds of meat, mashed potatoes, stuffing. Oh, wow. And you're just about to dig in when you look over and there's a little kid with his face pressed against the window and, it's, and he's drooling on the glass and he's looking pretty raggedy and he's probably pretty hungry. So what do you do next? Well, if you call the manager and say, would you get that kid out of there that's disturbing me? You are indeed the rich man in the parable. But if you pause your deal, go out and get that child something to eat. Maybe you're neither the rich nor the poor. Maybe you're the one delivering the blessing. That's the God idea. That's what God puts you there for to care for others. We see this in real life all too often. When I was in Elmore, one of my parishioners came up to me one day and said, uh, he was going into McDonald's in Genoa for a quick lunch and he noticed there was a guy in back going through the dumpster looking for something to eat. So he walked over, introduced himself and invited the guy to come in and have lunch with him. Now, he could have called the manager and said, there's a bum wandering around the parking lot. You better get rid of that guy. But he didn't. And afterwards, he came to me and says, how many more hungry people are there in Genoa, and what can we do about it? Suddenly, God had spoken to him and shown him a need, a need that perhaps he could help fulfill, a need that perhaps he could guide the church into fulfilling. What a cool thing. Another friend of mine spent almost a month in Africa on a mission trip. And being a doctor, he said, they worked him from sunup till sundown every day. I mean, some of these people had never seen a doctor before, and here he is to help take care of them. He said, and they fed him well, until he walked outside one day and he saw all the kids in the town 
holding these little pieces of palm leaf with a little bit of rice in the center and a couple of beans. And that was their meal. Well, from that point on, when they gave him the big bowl of rice with the chicken on the top and the greens and stuff, he took it outside, sat down with the kids, and shared the meal with them. He came back, said he lost 15 pounds, but it was the greatest trip he'd ever taken. God called to him to take care of the others, and the reward was this wonderful feeling. I wonder, what is God calling for you to do? And when you do it, how will you feel about it? The money we send to Kentucky, I wish we could see what that money does to rebuild homes or churches, provide food or shelter. Think how good that must feel when you see someone actually being a beneficiary of your gift. Of course, life is more than just feeding the hungry. There are so many needs in our lives and so many things we can do. And sadly, there are so many people that ignore those needs and focus only on their own desires. I'm going to take you out to a more corporate setting. Imagine a company, a guy sees a factory in a town and he buys it. Great, someone's come to town, there's going to be employment. And he starts making a product. And he makes money and the people make money. But at the same time, he's polluting the water and the ground around the factory. And when he sees it, he really can't do much about that and it's getting out of control. He simply closes the factory and moves on. I made my money. They made a little. Time to move on. What does the town do? He doesn't care. I think that's where Jesus defines another kind of rich man. The same way, imagine a large investment group. And they look out into this town and there's this piece of prime real estate it's sort of going to waste, and they decide, we'll buy it. Yeah. And we'll build an upscale community center, you know, with, with, with these high-class boutiques and some offices above for lawyers and accountants and doctors, and maybe some super luxurious condos on the side. Yeah. We'll make a fortune, and it'll improve the city. Everybody wins, right? So step one, let's buy the property that's on there, or all the buildings that are on it. And the guys owning the buildings are eager to sell because these are eyesores and they want to get out of it, but they can't, and here's their opportunity. Second, since most of these buildings are apartments, move the people out. But wait, what's, where are they going to go? Well, that's not our problem. We're, we're trying to build a, a complex here. We're trying to get something done. Besides, the mayor's coming in about three months to cut the ribbon. Let's get the job done. And they move through. Once again, we focus on our goals. And let the rest of the world take care of itself. I know, you can sit there and say, Boy, <laughs> makes me glad I'm not a rich guy. Head of some huge corporation. I'd hate to make decisions like that. And yet... In your own way, every individual, every family, even churches, have to make those kinds of decisions. Every one of you has something that somebody else needs, wants, could benefit from. Every one of you was blessed with something that God would like you to share or at least to use in a way that shows concern and care for your neighbors. Maybe it's, it's food. Maybe it's a friendly word. Maybe it's a church that's open to everyone. But the question is, what do you do about it?
that's the hard question. And what you choose to do with the blessings that God gave you and how you deal with them in relationship to the people who come in contact with you also determines your relationship with God. Yeah, I know God, and I worship Him every Sunday. But if by your actions you don't listen to Him, what's the benefit? And so, let's face it, there's times when we all make our decisions that are difficult to justify to God. Imagine these people with a factory or with a new community center saying, well, it's business, it's, it's, it's the way things work. I, the people in the town, the people in the apartments will have to take care of themselves. Try explaining that to God. Imagine, yes, if you were suddenly swept away and stood before God and he's going, what? At a time like that, in our own guilt, it's good to remember that if we're going to sin, then we should do it boldly. And if we recognize our sin, which is most important, and confess that sin, then we need to trust that God will forgive us all the more boldly. Of course, it's also better not to just sin at all. <laughs> so I'd like you to think about those things this week. What can I do to serve God? How do I use his blessings? Do that in Jesus' name. Amen. We continue with the hymn.
let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church and the world and all that God has made. Blessed are those who trust is in you. Strengthen the faith of those who profess your name and bring reassurance to those who doubt or fear. Through your church, speak continued blessings into the world. God of grace. Those who trust in you are like trees planted by the streams of water. Bless fruit trees with an abundant harvest. Protect rainforests from destruction. Restore land that has eroded after deforestation. Resurrect woodlands after forest fires. God of grace. Search the hearts of those who govern, that they lead with humility. Inspire leaders to collaborate on policies that protect people and the planet. Sustain truth-tellers in social movements that challenge society to become more honest and just. God of grace. Send your blessings of mercy upon those who long for consolation. Tend to those struggling with poverty, unemployment, or uncertainty. Provide for all who are hungry. Console those who face persecution. Grant peace to all who suffer. And draw near to those who are scared, sick, or in pain. Today we pray especially for Russ Welling, for Chuck and Janet Selby, for Melissa Briggs, Steve Roosh, Doris Rothenbuehler, and Ed Bro. For Lauren Lavoie, Elaine Baker, Anna Reisky, Kathy Panning, and Kelly Nitz. Finally, we pray for Ken Schober, Rod Limes, and Sandra Everhart. God of grace. Renew this congregation in our shared mission. As we plan and dream for the future you are preparing, Inspire us by the examples of Martin Luther and all the reformers. Bless new projects and new ministry partnerships. God of grace. Christ is raised from the dead. And so we cling to the hope of the resurrection. We praise you for the lives of the saints who lived and died in the hope of eternal life with you. God of grace. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We continue with the doxology and the collection of the offering.
Blessed are you, O God, sovereign of the universe. You offer us new beginnings and guide us on our journey. Lead us to your table and prepare us to carry your love to a hungry world. In the name of Christ, our light. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive this benediction. May the God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your goings out and your comings in, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the ascending hymn. I think this might be a good time to say thank you to our guest, our guest. <laughs> Let us repeat together our mission statement. Connecting to Christ, connecting to one another, connecting Christ to the community and the world. Then go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>